It's a privilege and an honor to present to you our first speaker, Deacon Israel David Hawkins. Shalom, everyone. My name is Israel David, and I'm on a... My, the title of my speech is Unity in the House of Yahweh. You may be seated. Now, by the end of the speech, I'd like everyone to understand exactly what unity is, uh, what disunity is, and how to avoid disunity, and uh, to be able to come into agreement with one another. Now, the word unity from the Webster's New World Dictionary, it means uh, harmony and agreement. Now, I want to I paint a picture in everyone's mind. I want everyone to imagine you walk into a room, there's two people sitting in a room, and then all of a sudden someone else comes in, and immediately you see the emotion of hatred rise on those people's faces. I'm sure a lot of us have seen that before. Now that, of course, is, a, is an example of disunity, disunity. There's obviously some tension going on. So let's find the problem. In the Going On to Perfection book, uh, the book of Israel number 2, chapter 22, sermon dated 528, 1993, pastor makes it clear to us that the main cause for disunity in the house of Yahweh is uncontrolled emotions, allowing our emotions to take control of a righteous judgment. So, uh, the Peaceful Solution teaches that emotions are normal physical and mental responses triggered by what we experience. And the key is to guard our mind so as not to allow these emotions to take hold of our righteous judgment. Because remember, these are feelings. And we can control our feelings by controlling our thoughts. Satan would like nothing better than to see all of us fail. And uh, if he can get us to be in disunity with one another, be arguing, fighting, be, uh, have animosity against one another, she's done her job well, and we've allowed her to do our job well. So we need to uh, not allow those thoughts that she uh, tries to plant in our mind take a hold of our feelings and our emotions, because she can get us to where we'll be fighting mad in seconds if we allow her to. Now the Peaceful Solution Self-Control Unit on page 41 tells us how to be aware of and how to curtail this pattern of negative emotions and feelings in our mind. It says our emotions can be positive, negative, or mixed, but what matters is how we respond to these emotions. We can actually control how we respond to these emotions. Now if we let them fester and allow ourselves to make judgments on these negative emotions, that's when problems arise. But when we control them and judge according to Yahweh's laws, that's when we of course have success. And that's a lot easier said than done. Okay, it's going to take a lot of practice, it's going to take effort, it's going to take, you're going to fail sometimes, and you're going to have to go back and apologize, but uh, because emotions strongly influence our thought process. Now, uh, these negative emotions and strong feelings, they will cloud our ability to see things in perspective if we allow them to. Okay, so it's up to us to completely clear the emotions to the side when you're in a uh, negative situation and uh, base our judgments solely on Yahweh's laws. Now on page 46 of the self-control unit, it, uh, we see the STOP acronym. I'm sure a lot of us have heard of the STOP acronym and uh, how to control our emotions. It says, controlling your full range of emotions requires you to examine your thoughts, evaluate what you are thinking and feeling. Then you need to respond in a way that is controlled and well-planned, it takes planning, and respectful regardless of how you feel, regardless of the emotions that are going through your mind. In the previous chapter, you learned about the STOP acronym. So the STOP acronym is STOP and identify what you are thinking and feeling. Identify the emotion and identify the thought. Think about what actions your feelings could lead to. So you have a negative emotion, and if you act on that emotion, what could, that, what could the outcome be? Remember that negative emotions can result in harm to yourself and others, and even positive emotions, if acted on a, without careful thought and consideration, can cause negative consequences. So ask yourself, am I observing this situation accurately? Am I allowing my emotions to cloud my judgments? And am I keeping things in perspective? Then the next one, options. What are my choices? Weigh out the consequences or the rewards of your uh, option. And then of course proceed by making a decision that is respectful and responsible and that is uh, using Yahweh's laws. Okay. Now this, of course, is going to take a lot of practice. It's going to take a lot of practice and it's going to take falling backwards. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes, okay? And, uh, and it's going to take practice until it becomes a habit. And it will become a habit if we constantly practice it and continually practice it, as Pastor says to do. Remember, reiterate. 
Now, uh, we're going to have emotions, and that's okay. We're going to have strong emotions. We're going to have negative emotions, and that's okay. But what matters is how we control those emotions. It's up to us to control our emotions, suppress them, and allow Yahweh's laws to take over our judgment. Satan would like nothing more than to see all of us fail and to see uh, the brothers in the house of Yahweh in disagreement. Now, if we allow our emotions to take rule and take them to the side of the adversary, then uh, we're just making her job a lot easier. Now, in, uh, for my closing scripture, Romans 15, verse 5 through 6. Romans chapter 15, verse 5 through 6, it says, Now may the Father who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Yahshua Messiah, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify Yahweh, the Father of our ruler, Yahshua Messiah. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the next speaker. If you'd all please stand. Yakob. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. Today, my topic is going to be on why the hatred, why the hatred for the house of Yahweh. As we can see, the persecution against the house of Yahweh is becoming a norm. And why is that? Because we're unveiling and exposing their sins. If, if you turn over to Yachanan 15 verse 22, it reads, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had their sins revealed. But now they have no cloak covering for their sins. He who hates me also hates my father. Even right now as we speak, Satan is trying to destroy us, trying to put down the work, slow it down by the weapons of war, the uprisings, the fires, the storms, and even the mental attacks. She's trying to stop you to stop you from coming to the feast. So keep coming to the eternal appointments and keep coming to the feast of Yahweh. Give it all you have and remain strong because Satan's going to try to keep pushing you to do the wrong thing and to leave the house of Yahweh. So remain strong and usher in the kingdom of Yahweh. Thank you.